You seem mighty happy with yourself tonight, J.R. You managed to evict some widows today? You keep drinking like that, and you're gonna be evicted onto a trash heap, dear. I'm amazed you're not a better loser. After all the experience you've had. I just want you to know, J.R., I'm gonna nail you. Now, haven't you noticed? You gotta be a man to play in my league. Pamela, how's your daddy? Well, he's really very sick. Thank you, Lucy. You mean drunk? A lot of that going around. Hey, hold on, Ray. You're just a hired hand around here. Don't try to shift the blame on me. Well, everybody can see that she's cracking up, slowly and surely, and who can blame her? I mean, she finds out that her daddy, Digger Barnes, is no relation at all. And her real father is a saddle tramp and a thief, and, and her mother's a whore. Now, who could find it in their heart to hate that poor little girl, huh? Could you? Tell me, J.R., which slut are you going to stay with tonight? What difference does it make? Whoever it is, it's got to be more interesting than the slut I'm looking at right now. I'm going to bring Bobby down. I'm going to cut him out if I have to destroy Ewing all to do it. Marriage is not always a bed of roses. Isn't that right, fam? No? Nobody here but us rich folks. <laughs> Well, he is money safe, JR. Oh, I know it. Pays to have you and blood in your veins, no matter how it got there. No one you care so much for Sue Ellen. She's just like your mother. Another drunken slut who ran away. You slime. You make me sick. Keep out of my way, Pamela, or I'll destroy you. What do you like in your coffee? Bourbon. Well, you have a very perverse way of looking at what's right and wrong, honey. Well, I suppose that's to be expected from the illegitimate child of a ranch foreman and the stepdaughter of the town drunk. Yeah. Mr. Ewing, there's a Mr. Cliff Barnes here to see you. Who? Cliff Barnes. Tell him to get lost. I'm putting you on notice, Barnes. Oh? I'm going to destroy you. Oh, Barnes, you just get dumber and dumber every day. <laughs> you have succeeded in becoming the perfect failure. <laughs> I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. I'm sorry Ray isn't here. Well, Ray was always uncomfortable eating with the family. I mean, after all, we do use knives and forks. Oh, I'd like to, Dave. I really would. But uh, somebody's got to mind the store. You see, my daddy and I handed the reins of viewing oil over to an amateur once before. And almost lost the whole shooting match. From now on, my life is going to be strictly monogamous. Real happy to hear you're working with Mary Lee Stone. How are you? Try not to write any checks on her money. I wouldn't want you to ruin her company like you did your mama's. Ray just doesn't have the strength of character of a real yelling. Oh, of course, that's understandable in his case, you know. Gary's coming in? Well, it's nothing like a little inheritance to get a man to come back home. Well, Gary and Ray. Well, what's a family for if it can't take care of its losers? All I'm saying is I'm glad that mama didn't schedule another voting meeting. The only way we'd get Ray there to vote his shares is to hold it in the bar. What were you doing in the south of France with Mark Grayson holding hands? Now tell me, was Mark Grayson the only one? Or did you try a few Frenchmen just because you were there? Everybody Schwing. warned me about Everybody doing business with you. Well, maybe they were right. Hello, Pam. Say, weren't you here a couple of months ago? You're not going to make a habit out of this, are you? Barnes, you're as dumb as your daddy used to be. You're going to bankrupt your mama's company and wind up just like your daddy. A drunk and a bum. How nice. You're concerned about my happiness. Oh, no, I don't give a damn about you or your happiness, honey, but I do care about what's good for me. Well, yes, there's some truth in the idea that we were going to share the company. Well, I'll be down. I've never been a sore loser. Congratulations on your win, Bobby. Not that it makes any difference. I mean, we have decided to be partners, right? Huh? Bob, you've never gone back on a deal. We are partners, right? Just the way Daddy wanted it. Well, if it isn't the whole Barnes Wentworth clan. Oh, by the way, Pam, what name are you using now that you're no longer Ewing? That's really none of your business, is it? Oh, well, I was just curious as to how I'm going to introduce everybody, but, uh, well, you know Jenna Wade. Uh, Jenna, you remember Pam? Bobby married her after you ran out on him. Yeah, the proper recipient of a Digger Barnes Scholarship Award isn't a university. It's a neighborhood bar. Guess I better change and go to work. Somebody's got to keep the family fortune rolling in. See you, Mama. Why did you do that? Because you needed slapping down, Cliff. 
Tomorrow morning, the janitor's going to come in here and sweep you out with the rest of the trash. Unless, of course, you do the honorable thing. Get in the elevator, go up the roof, and jump off, huh? <laughs> I expect to find you in my bed tonight. I'll probably be late. Wait up for me. Well, the pressure may be off of us. What about Pam? I don't give a damn about Pam. Well, congratulations, young lady, on finding yourself a real nice home. You know, you're really something. No wonder my daddy didn't want to have anything to do with you. Well, it's a shame you're not more like him. Well, look here. Birds of a feather. Plotting an assassination, are you? Or trying to figure out some way of stealing somebody else's company? You know what they say. Losers tend to flock together. Ah, like the little lady you're with, huh? Cliff. <laughs> I've always heard you're a big spender, JR. Tell me, how much did it cost you to have her throw me over? Oh, that was for free. All she had to do was hang around with you for a while. Well, enjoy your champagne. I hope you paid for it, Barnes. I think we'll be moving along. I knew we shouldn't have come here. Oh, darling, I wouldn't have missed that for the world. <laughs> hey, Barnes. See, I told you not to drag me into court. Now the whole world knows what a loser your daddy was. I suppose it's hereditary, huh? <laughs> what are you doing here? I just want to see if you're still sober. Sue Ellen, don't bother with that story on my account, honey. We both know you're lush. I didn't know. Of course you didn't know. How could you have known? You were too busy rolling around in bed with that saddle tramp. I had one brother and he's dead. Nobody can ever replace him. Least of all, you two. Now, you listen to me, Kenison. There was a time I wouldn't waste a minute on you. I'd simply have your legs broken. Ray, I stopped trying to explain the oil business to farmers a long time ago. If you want to ruin your life, go ahead. But you're a whole lot dumber than I ever thought a brother of mine could be. With the exception of Ray and Gary, of course. I got news for you. Every independent in Texas is going to be on my bandwagon soon. <laughs> well, they sold a lot of tickets for the Titanic, too. <laughs> Well, are the bars closed, or were you just 86 Family. Well, look around the table. Can't see family for the outsiders. I'm kind of tired of half-breeds and moochers and strangers hanging around here. You don't have any class, Dwell, and you never have. I took lessons from you all these years. I guess I must have learned very well. The only thing you ever learned is that vodka doesn't smell on your breath. Hello, JR. Well, hello, Daddy. You know, Cliff Barnes, you are the sorriest excuse for a man that I have ever met. Well, I'll second that. So Ellen and I went to the Auburn's last night. And who did we run into but that termite brother of yours? Is that your concern, for God's sake, the memory of a dead girl? A very high official approached me and told me that if I paid the right price, he could fix things and I'd never have to worry about this again. But that person didn't know J.R. Ewing. I don't believe in bribery. Oh, I knew there was a reason I liked that boy. Yeah, he's just about the best liar I ever met. With the exception of myself, of course. You're not worth the money I'm paying you. If a cop can't break the law, what the hell use is he? Yeah, you do that. While you're at it, book yourself on the Titanic. <laughs> mm. Oh, James, never tell the truth when a good lie will do. The day I start living by the rules you set down is the day the Dallas Cowboys will be back in the Super Bowl. Hey, it's JR here. Listen up. Well, of course I know what time it is. So what? I'm never gonna let a wife of mine dictate to me. I'm not trying to dictate to you. The hell you're not. Clayton's leaving to see Grandma tomorrow. Oh, wonderful. Any message you want me to give her? Yeah. Tell her I wish she was still single. You got no morals, you got no scruples. You might be worthy of me yet. Hatching your silly little plots and your silly little heads, you're not good enough to wipe the spit off my boots. If Mama needs me, I'll be at the single tree. That's Mama's chair. Nobody sits in it but her. Where would you like for me to sit? Right there. Used to be Pam's chair. Couldn't stand her either. 